Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a podcast style show. We take one big topic and we break it down into five episodes in a series. This week we are talking about viruses. So what are they? Where do they come from? And in this episode, are they alive? Because it's kind of still a debate. Viruses were first discovered at the end of the 19th century. Science back then was still kind of a gentleman's game. You would have some money and be able to do some science. In 1884, we knew bacteria existed and they created something, a scientist named Chamberlain created something about called the Chamberlain filter, which was created to pull bacteria out of solution. So they could put this filter through and find bacteria. But viruses, they didn't know about yet. In 1892, they put tobacco leaves through these filters and it turned out the tobacco leaves had this disease and it still spread so they found that there must be something smaller than bacteria causing the problems. Another scientist in 1898 and looked at them and they used the word virus which at the time meant poison. It changed meaning throughout history. The first time anyone ever decided that a virus was a thing was the tobacco mosaic virus. And viruses were thought at the time, as I said, to be a poison and later determined to maybe be life forms. And then they were like, no, you know what? They're not life forms. We went a little far on the life form train. Let's back it up a bit. They're biological chemicals. And then they were like, no, no, no. Maybe they are life forms. They seem to behave like life forms. This is a debate that's still kind of ongoing. They're in this gray area between are they alive or are they not alive? Physically, A virus is a bit of nucleic acid, which is either DNA or RNA, usually between three three genes and 400 genes. I was about to say three to 400. No, literally three genes, all the way up to 400 genes. Then they're coated in a protein for protection, and it also forms the capsid, which is the main part of the virus, most of its mass. Then there's the lipid membrane, which is an envelope that surrounds that to protect it as well. Although not all viruses have an envelope. Some are called naked viruses, like the adenovirus, or the, uh, well, the adenovirus is a good example, but influenza and HIV are enveloped viruses. Viruses are very tiny, between 17 and 300 nanometers, it's determined by how much DNA they hold, and about one millionth of an inch if you're using the ye olde English system. And if that seems simple, I mean, really, three genes? That's so simple, and that's exactly what it is to be a virus. Viruses are simple, and in fact, they are the simplest form of life. I'm using finger quotes there if you're listening. Viruses uh, don't contain enzymes needed for chemical reactions, which means that they aren't alive, really, or at least they don't think they are. They need a host cell in order to reproduce themselves, and they need that host cell in order to, to basically behave as life. No host, the DNA that is a virus doesn't really do much of anything. So what happens is the virus hits a cell and it grabs onto the exterior and then gets inside and allows itself to touch the DNA that makes that cell run. Then the two combine together and the cell and the virus can multiply. either. The virus will hook onto the DNA and just hang out, kind of hidden, and wait for the cell to multiply and create another virus and another cell and another virus and another cell. Or the more common way that you see it on television in in, in describing is it starts replicating right away. It hits that DNA and it doesn't wait for the cell to divide, but starts taking over the cell. They use their DNA and RNA to basically change how the cell functions. They give the cell new instructions. And instead of, say, it's a skin cell, you know, it's there to kind of protect you and maybe have some melanin and just kind of hang. Instead, its job is now to make more of the virus. And instead of doing that as just a whole virus pops out again and again, what happens is the cell starts to create little chunks of viruses that eventually hit each other and form into a full virus. This happens uh, over time, and they use the cytoplasm of the cell to re-encapsulate, create new capsids, and then burst out of the cell once it's too full. Most people have seen this before in, you know, in school. But this seems pretty sophisticated, right? This is essentially like a little life spy 
It's down in the cell, like reprogramming and hacking into it and telling it, instead of doing your job, you have to do this other job that I, that I brought with me. But where, where the heck did that come from? We don't really know. There's actually very little understood about the history of viruses. Some viruses aren't bad. They don't just kill things. Some viruses do repairs. When things happen to a cell sometimes, uh, there's a thing called a free radical. I'm not going to explain it, but just know that it's damaging. Some viruses, their whole job is to repair free radicals. That's what they do. But in general, viruses are essentially unchanged for billions of years, even though they do mutate into new viruses. But the actual existence of viruses and the way they operate, unchanged, billions and billions of years. If the replication process is survived in a cell, the virus can actually become part of the host. So say the virus latches onto that DNA, like I said, and lets the cell multiply. It could end up never activating never taking over the cell and just become part of whatever it is that has been dividing that whole time. Uh, mono and herpes, for example, share properties with different genes in actual animal cells. So there's a theory that maybe mono and herpes actually used to be cells DNA and broke off and became kind of this free roaming virus able to infect other things. But we don't know. It's still undiscovered. However, Biology Direct, a study in Biology Direct, found a brand new virus, which hopefully we can use to learn about how viruses formed. And it's a, they call it a novel viral genome, because they're very exciting in science. And they think it came from a spontaneous combining of nucleic acid that they found in a hot acidic lake. So these little organic acids just happened to hit each other in just the right way that they became a new virus. Just, just like that. Isn't that crazy? So cool. But what do you guys think? Are viruses alive? Tell me down in the comments. I'll be down there with you so we can talk about it. Maybe we can come up with a way to categorize them, you know, if you really get in there. Uh, make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus. And if some of this was still confusing for you, make sure you check out yesterday's episode about some of the biggest viruses in history and the worst ones ever. And also make sure you subscribe, like I said, for more Test Tube Plus. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.